Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back. So I wanted to share my run for Annihilation 3 um, on my free to play account where I only use four star units. And this was the exact team that I used in order to basically clear the stage and their exact um, levels and um, potential as well. And all their skills are at least rank 7, um, I, ex with the exception of Shiaryuki, she actually has Mastery 2, but uh, Mastery 2 only increases the slow speed of her shuriken, so I don't think it's that big of a deal. And it also reduces the cooldown by, or the cost by 1, which is also not um, a big deal because it, on this stage, like, you'll, you'll see that there's like, I don't, I don't spam activate the skill immediately. When it's up so i don't think it's that big of a deal but um if i have her mastery three that actually makes a huge deal because on mastery three she gets 10 percent more arts damage and i'm actually currently working on getting her mastery three but that's for a that's for a future video now for this video i can't call it a guide because this this run is um i would highly recommend against copying what I'm doing okay I just wanted to basically show the run and explain what I'm doing for reference but I would highly highly recommend against you doing it um, finally clearing Annihilation 3 with only four star and three star units actually made me realize that uh, a lot of times like you know a lot of those like clear guide videos that you see um, especially the ones where like people are clearing Annihilation 3 with only E1 units the timing is so precise okay the timing is like in the milliseconds it's like you have to activate a certain like you have to activate your healer's skill like in the milliseconds while like uh some something is like um the, one of the casters have their attacks like in midair and then if you like fail the timing then your frontline units would die like it's so precise to that point that i don't think even if you were to wanted to auto it it's not worth the effort to try to replicate it because you're gonna get so many failed runs before you actually get one successful one. And I think in terms of just like, you know, in terms of effort to actually clear the stage and get your, your weekly rewards, I would recommend you just borrow one of your friends like Ifrits and clear that way. If you can borrow one of your friends Ifrits, if you don't, don't know for Annihilation, your support units, once you use them, you can actually, to clear a stage, you can actually use them again. So you can use the same Ifrit to do your weeklies, as long as you, you have one on your um, support list. Okay, so that's that's what I rec recommend doing. And another thing that a lot of people don't know about Annihilation is, if you have a failed run and you don't want that run to like save and waste sanity, you can actually close your game and you actually won't um, lose sanity if you're doing Annihilation, which is actually why I was so able to get so many runs in without like wasting a lot of sanity because if I if that didn't work I probably would have get, get given up a long long time ago um, I actually have a like a folder of all my failed runs these are all every single one of my failed runs it's like one two three four five six seven eight nine nine times that's 27 runs Tw on my 28th run I was able to get it okay so it took me 28 runs of uh, of doing this before I got a successful run with um, with this, and I think a lot this also reveals a lot of the like I don't think I'm that bad of a player. I, I don't know if you you think so. Maybe you're watching me for the first time. I, I really don't think I'm that bad of a player, but it's just so difficult. Like the timing has to be so precise um, that it's it's just it really is not worth the effort for the average player. So I really would not recommend anybody do this. I think a lot of times, like a lot of content creators that show like really extreme runs, they don't, it's, it's more of just to like impress people than to make it a realistic guide because most of the time, what most people don't see is in order to get that one successful run, they had to fail so many times before to, to cash that one successful run, okay? So that's that's why I highly, highly recommend you just borrow a support unit from one of your friends to do this if your units aren't very strong. Now, with that being said, I'm gonna show you my, uh, my successful run. Let me just uh, find the, these are all my fails. Ah, here we are. All right, so this is my Annihilation 3 run. This is the actual successful run. 
that I got. And I want to um, kind of explain the thought process and I'll actually skip a lot of the video as well. And also share a, little, a lot of the details of what I learned. So you can kind of watch out for, for your own run. And I think everybody has like different levels of units. So it's gonna be very, very difficult. It's gonna be very strange for um, for me to basically just you know recommend that you have to have this specific level of units because a lot of things are so precise. It's like, um, I'll give an example. It's like, there's there's a point where Gummy's like blocking three jumpmen and the big like heavy dude is walking by and I want I don't want Gummy to block the big heavy dude. I want Korra to do it because he would stun Korra and then at that point I would kill one of the jumpmen and then once Korra is stunned, Gummy would continue blocking the big heavy dude. But then if he gets if he um, stuns Gummy, then the junkman would um, would walk by. So if Gummy's level was actually higher than and was able to kill kill one of the junkmen, it actually would have made my run fail. So a lot of the things are like super super precise for like specifically my team that um, I can't really call this a guide. I think that's the main main reason. I think in the in the next um, next video I'll probably just borrow an Ifrit and show you how basically anybody can copy a a run where you have like a support Ifrit, okay? But I I was able to do it with um, with four star units. So this um, it took a lot of like a lot of troubleshooting. So in the beginning I'm I'm putting down Scavenger. Your Vanguard is 100% necessary. You need your Vanguard to be able to um, basically regenerate DP for, for the run. And you also need your Vanguard, an extra melee unit to block later on. And I'm putting down Meteor over here, um, and then I'm putting down Shura Yuki. Now, for some some um, Annihilation 3 clear guides, they'll recommend you put down Shura Yuki first. But I actually, f through trial and error, found out specifically for my team, um, because your healer will heal the lowest um, HP unit, that one of my runs, if I put down Shuryuki first, um, my healer would actually heal another unit, and then Shuryuki would take too much damage from the next attack, plus like the crossbow, and she would actually die. So the, the placement in the very beginning of the stage was like, had to be very specific. And I had to find that out through trial and error. So I put down Shuryuki first. I think having your units, um, like, full mastery, like much higher level would actually make this a lot easier. So basically in the beginning, it's um, the only thing you have to worry about is the placement order of your, your units. You don't need to place them down fast. So your your um, deployment points isn't an issue on, on the stage at all. Deployment points like in Annihilation is, most of the Annihilation stages are are basically not an issue at all. I actually make a mistake on this run as well, which will show you that deployment points actually isn't that big of an issue. So the after I put down my single target sniper up here, um, I put a single target healer behind. So this setup is basically something you might have seen before if you see, saw my last video. I started by copying the setup of the that video I saw, but I real quickly realized that a lot of the, these things are um, are specific to to various teams so my my mess up here was i put down shaw but i was actually supposed to put down perfumer first and this is a big deal because if you put down um, perfumer before shaw and then later on there's going to be a point where um, i don't have anyone over here so perfumer is going to be taking damage from the crossbow that's going to be shooting and a drone's going to be flying by so a perfumer takes a hit from um from the the drone plus the the crossbow like she can be in danger so I actually switched out um, I actually removed Shaw um, and then had to re-replace re or re re put down Shaw later and the deployment points wasn't an issue I was able to still put down Shaw and then I put down gummy and then I put down midnight up, up top now this um, this it basically Everybody, with the exception of Chitano, Shirayuki, and Midnight, um, can basically be replaced by any higher rarity, same type of unit. If you don't know like the, the unit types, you can watch my team building.
specified. It goes um, into more detail than just the classes because there's like various types of guards, various types of tanks, various types of, um, you know, there's like four types of guards, two types of vanguards, you know, so, so basically like as long as they're the same type, you can kind of replace them with higher rarity ones um, if you have like five star, six star ones. So over here, um, basically up, up top, it has to be midnight and this has to be Shirayuki. If you want to do it this way, like, or close to this way, it has to be Shirayuki. If you don't have like Ifrit or Silver Ash carrying, it has to be Shirayuki. I, I found that out by actually like trial and error. If, um, in any of my comments, a lot of comments before asked like if they can use Meteorite instead, Meteorite will, will not work. Like if you have an Ifrit carrying you, yeah, Meteorite, it doesn't matter who you use. But if you, like if you have an Ifrit or Silver Ash carrying you, it doesn't matter who you use. But if you actually need like your AOE sniper to be doing work in this stage, it has to be Shirayuki, it can't be Meteorite. And this has to be Midnight, it can't be Frostleaf, it can be Silver Ash, and it can be Laplin. Because on my main account, I was able to use Laplin, but I can't say 100% for sure if any, everybody can use Laplin. Because on my main account, I was using, my, my Laplin is Mastery 2 with max potential, and I was using Chen at the same time as well, with her skill too. So, um, and my Laplin's also E2, so I, I can't say for sure if like every Laplin will work. Um, but like uh, Laplin on on top or Silver Ash, Silver Ash with if your Silver Ash is E two with so, True Silver Slash, it'll definitely work. There's there's no way it won't uh, when when I needed to need the top unit to do what I needed to do later. So over here, once you have the setup, um, we can literally skip to three hundred. Like there's really nothing to watch out for. The only thing you want to watch out for is like at the bottom when there's two units at a time. You just use um, your push units push skill to push them into this hole. Okay. So your um, what, one other thing I forgot to mention. I, I did mention before all my skills are like rank seven, right? Everybody's skill is rank seven. The other thing is your push unit like it has to be E one with rank seven and has skill two equip because you need to use the strong push to push the um, the units later down into this hole, the heavy units, the junkmen basically into this hole. So that's pretty much it. Like there's really nothing to watch out for until 300. Um, basically you wanna not switch out your Vanguard until 300. The reason for this is because there's a bombing drone and if you put anything here, it's gonna be in range of its bomb. So you wanna, you wanna wait for the drone to die and then put down a, a tank here. And for, for my team, it specifically had to be Korra. For this team, it specifically had to be Korra. On my main account, I was using Hoshiguma, but, um, and I found out I was able to do that because my snipers were stronger on my main account. Um, on my main account, I was using Ex Exia and Blue Poison. I was using Blue Poison back here, which was the reason why I was able to do it with Hoshiguma. And um, actually, Exia matters too, because he'll actually, she, she actually kills one of the Junkmen um, when they come out over here. I actually didn't record a run in my main account. I should probably record a run as well for that. Is it me or do you hear water flowing? All right, so basically there's nothing to watch out for until 344. Um, I, I ran, I've had so many failed attempts that I like literally remember everything, <laughs> every single step. I still have it memorized right now. So there's nothing to watch out for over here, except the fact that you don't want to activate your Shirayuki skill here or your Midnight skill. It's very important that you don't do it because you need them, need them immediately later at 350. So this way of over here with the Junkmen and the big um, Butcher Dudes is when you want, you want to wait for two Junkmen to stack up on your push unit and then once they do, you activate your push unit skill to push them down. And here I mentioned that I had to use Korra on this team. And the main reason I had to use Korra on this team is because my, my um, snipers weren't strong enough to kill the Junkmen before they got here. 
but on my main account I was able to kill one of the junkmen before they got here so there's only your tank can't block four units but Korra is able to block four units with her skill so I activate her skill and I'm able to block um, you know more block four units at a time basically and then it's very important here again you don't use any of your skills until 350 so the timing here is super precise um, if you mess this up then it will be it, ha it will be a fail run so this is like the first detail I had to pause it here and just like make sure there was a lot of pausing later on because I had to make sure like every single detail is precise so this big dude at the top you want um, he's gonna get into range first and your share EQ will actually attack him with the first attack and he has this this guy I looked up on the um, the wiki he specifically has um, 700 armor so your normal attack will only do 300 damage it won't do a lot of damage but if you use um, share EQ skill and do 70% arts damage you actually take take a pretty big hit so you want to activate your Shoryuki skill before he steps into this steps into attack range, and your first Shoryuki's first attack will hit him. Um, making sh making sure this happens will basically allow Midnight when Midnight activates his skill to also kill him later. So he's about to get into range. I activate my skill, and the first attack um, hits him like this, and then I throw it. Shariki's skill lasts exactly 25 seconds. So it's, it's very important that you uh, you time everything right. And then the same thing for Midnight as well. Uh, you, you can't miss a single attack here. Like So you want to basically activate Midnight's skill before he gets into range. So the moment he starts moving, I activate my Midnight skill. You can see that there's no, um, there was, there was no big numbers on Big Knight. I think until the last hit, meaning his passive didn't proc, and then this will allow him to, um, even if his passive didn't proc, it it would still allow him on the last attack, like right when the dude like raises his, his big hammer, uh, Midnight's gonna actually attack first and finish him off. So your Midnight needs to be like max max level as well with max um, skill level. And over here, you want to wait until Midnight actually kills this guy. I also, down here, I use Shaw to push him into the hole. Um, you want to always remember to use your Shaw skill to push units into the hole when they come. You have to do that manually. So the moment that th that guy dies, I retreat Midnight. I'm going to fit one more attack onto the Junkman, and I'm going to retreat Midnight. And I'm gonna put down um, my third, my second tank, Matterhorn, my second normal tank. And the reason I'm doing this is to also um, attract the the damage from the drone, because if I'm using Midnight here, I won't be able to tank the drone plus this guy plus the Junkman. So I have to use a tank here. And um, down here there was another detail I actually forgot to mention. There was something I did I forgot to mention. Um, you'll, you'll see that your, your sniper over here is actually, because they're anti-air snipers, they'll actually target the drones first. So the moment that the two, two drones down here die, there's going to be two drones um, down below. You want to wait for the second drone to die, and the moment the second drone dies, you want to switch out your sniper for Jitano. And it's specifically, um, for this team, it has to be Jitano. It can't be, it can't be Skyfire. It has to be Jitano. Because of her, her range later. So up here is the same. Um, we already talked about this before. I switch to Matterhorn. And then once this the second guy starts moving, I activate my Shirayuki skill. Because I'm going to need the Ars damage to be able to kill him later. And the Ars damage also does extra damage. So it will help me kill the Junkman faster as well. So activate activate my Shiryuki skill. And then right now I'm waiting for Jitano to um, have her skill ready. It was very important to place her down as early as possible. So the moment Jessica actually took out the drones, I had to replace, um, replace her with Jitano immediately. 
And the moment the skill was ready, I was spam clicking it. Um, she doesn't have mastery, it's just rank 7 right now. The only unit that has mastery is, um, is Shirayuki. She has mastery 2 on her, um, her second skill. So Jitano was able to take out the last two heavy dudes with her uh, OP superior range. And then over here, there's like a little bit of um, breathing room up until the point that um, this guy dies. So Shada's does, does pushing one more time. The one that Korra's blocking up until the point at 370 um, Korra is going to, you're going to remove Korra to kill this last drone. Now the reason I had to do this is because this drone will move at the same time as this caster later on. And once they, they move um, forward, they will attack the closest unit in range that you put down last. And once it gets to this slot, it's going to hit Jitano no matter what. And um, Perfumer and Gummy, because Gummy is also blocking two right now, she won't be able to sustain herself and Jitano at the same time. So she, a lot of her healing is going to go to herself. And this caster is going to come into range very soon. And it's going to hit both um, both Gummy and Jitano. So Perfumer is not able to sustain both of them. Which is why I had to take down this drone very quickly right now. I was forced to make this move to kill this drone. I think if my Shirayuki was like Mastery 3, like max level... I prob she probably would have killed this drone, but um, she didn't do that, so I had to make this this little move over here. And then I remove um, I remove Midnight, and here's another detail. Um, I had to have Perfumer's second skill equipped. Now, if you're using Telopsis, this will be way easier, because Telopsis doesn't have like a um, increased interval. She actually has decreased interval, so her healing is like very rapid. Um, if you're using Nightingale, it'll also be very easy because Nightingale gives everyone like magic resist and you can also use the cages to block the attacks from these guys. So if you're using if you're using Perfumer, you have to do this. I have Perfumer's second skill equip. And the moment that um, right after Jitano takes a hit from the bolt, the moment that Perfumer is raising her hand. Now, her second skill increases her attack interval, but increases her um, attack, which increases the amount of healing that she does. So you can actually time this so when she's about to actually use her heal, you turn on the skill and it will actually give her the increased attack before the, um, and the attack interval like increase won't matter because she's actually right about to, right about to heal. So you, the moment you see her raising her hand to heal, you activate that skill and then it will heal um, Jitano and Gummy to full. And then this way, Jitano is able to take a hit from the caster and a bolt before she drops down really, really low again. And then Perfumer will, will be able to heal in time again to heal Jitano back up to pretty much full. And at this point, um, when the ca caster gets down to here, you want to use Shaw to push him down before he can get another attack off. He, if he gets another attack off, um, it's going to hit Jitano, and the bolt's going to fly out, and Jitano is going to die before Perfumer can heal. Like this. Like, if he, if she if he, she took another bolt, she would be dead before Perfumer can raise her hand and heal right now. So you have, you have to use Shaw to push, push her down immediately. And over here, I'm just putting down um, Scavenger. I probably could have done this earlier, but it doesn't matter, because the Scavenger is going to um, basically just... Just only be here to block this one jump in. She was the only available melee unit that I had left, so I just used her to block this one jump in. So we're at three, 375. And now I'm waiting for basically this last jump in to get into place. It's very important here that you don't um, pop Shirayuki's skill right now when you can. You don't want to spam click it because you'll need it immediately later. Um, when the last final boss comes out. So over here, once the last guy, last boss comes out, you want to pop your Shirayuki skill immediately. If you don't do do that, you won't have it ready later when the um, when the next heavy unit comes out. So 
So right now I'm waiting for the um, the next guy to come out. And the moment he comes out, I pop pop my Shuriki skill. And then right now I'm actually just waiting for um, I'm waiting for my Koro to be ready. I actually could have removed Scavenger right now, but I, it actually didn't matter at the end, so it was fine. So over here is another very important detail. Um, I had to remove Matterhorn right now because matter right after this guy dies, and I pop sh I pop Shuriki's skill before he dies. The next move is actually to remove Matterhorn. I'm actually waiting for um, Jutano's skill, but I was supposed to remove Matterhorn earlier, and then I do so now. I remove Matterhorn because there's um, there's only going to be like one light unit that comes at a time on the top side. So basically Shiryuki plus Meteor can basically kill the whatever is running over here without me needing to block anything. And I need Matterhorn later, which is why I um, removed Matterhorn. So over here, because um, Shiryuki still has her, her skill active, and then Jitano pops her skill the moment that she can, she's able to kill these two units at once. And then at this point, the moment that they die, you want to remove her immediately, which will, which um, is also the t exact same time that Midnight was about to, um, basically it, the exact same time that uh, Midnight was ready, her, his redeployment time was ready. So I put him down and then I put down Jessica behind, um, facing forward. And Jessica's going to deal with the drones that come later. So Jessica has to basically be here. Now, another detail is I had to put Midnight down first before Jessica. Uh, you would think this is somewhat backwards, but the reason for doing this is because this, dr one, this drone, once it gets into range here, uh, one of the drones that will come here later, um, Midnight's going to be tanking like one or two of the Junkmen, and you don't want the drone, uh, you don't want the drone basically hitting Midnight once it gets to this place or once it gets out of range of, um, of Korra. Because, or, or basically what, what's happening right now is um, the last placed unit that you placed down was, was Korra, I think. Let me think. Oh, I, I missed another detail here. This was so fast. So I removed Jitano, or I popped Jitano's skill. Let me think. And then I removed Matterhorn. And then, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I placed down Korra first before Jitano's skill ended. So the drone would be, basically would be hit, continue to hit Midnight even if, if it gets here, gets to here. So I put down um, Jessica afterwards, so the drone would actually hit Jessica. And then later on, it doesn't matter because I'm gonna put down another melee unit and then the drone's gonna hit the last place unit. I'm gonna place Matterhorn here later to attract the drone's attention w once the next one comes. So even if Jessica gets low, as long as she doesn't die here, um, it doesn't matter. That she's not getting any healing and perfumer also has her passive but even without perfumer's passive um jessica wouldn't wouldn't have died anyways because nothing would be attacking jessica afterwards so i you know the moment cora was ready i also switched out cora if you missed that detail before and then over here um this this top guy over over here i'm trying to fit uh, i'm basically basically trying to kill him quickly so when this guy this guy walks in like a zigzag once he walks up here you want Shiryuki to start hitting him as much as possible and you're only gonna fit a few attacks in um, before he gets into before he gets down over here to where Gummy is and then Shiryuki will stop attacking him so you just wanted to fit those like two attacks in and then over here, Midnight Skill is ready, so I'm going to activate Midnight Skill to kill whatever is over here. So here's another detail. So right now there's um, this big, big dude, and there's the, there's the one Junkman walking forward to Midnight. Midnight will be able to block them both, but he's not going to be able to tank him for long. But um, basically once he walks up, Midnight will be tanking the Junkman, and then he, he will zigzag up, and um, Korra will basically be tanking the big dude. Over here, um, there's 
there's what what happened just now was there was a drone that that was that flew by but at the same time there was a big there was a normal guy up here and i don't have enough dps to kill the drone and kill this guy in time with uh, my meteor and, and shirayuki so i basically i had to remove shirayuki and put down my scavenger to block this guy it was the only way i could do this without leaking so i'm trying to I was actually trying to fit one more auto in, but then I realized it wasn't worth the risk. So I put down Scavenger, and then um, at this point, it, it's pretty safe. This was the second drone I mentioned earlier about the, um, basically, I don't, I don't want it to hit midnight on the second hit. Actually, wait, no, no, never mind. This, this drone's not gonna, nothing, nothing bad's gonna happen if it, if it um, actually hits midnight over here. So I guess the Midnight Jessica replacement or, or placement order doesn't actually matter too much. But I think this placement order is safer. Because you don't want Midnight taking extra damage while he's tanking the Junkman. If he falls, then the Junkman would just keep walking forward. Oh wait, the Junkman is already dead as well. So I guess it doesn't matter too much. It really doesn't matter which, which one you place down first. The placement order there didn't matter that much. Um, originally, what I wanted to do was I was planning to, after this guy dies, I was planning to remove my um, scavenger and put put Matterhorn over here, but it actually I actually didn't need to do that, so that was a bit of a relief because I raised my <laughs> meteor to like pretty high level for this this stage. Um, before I had like a, a run where I was trying to kill the top guy without putting scavenger down and I thought that if I maybe made my meteor um, a little bit higher level I would be able to do that which is why he's level 60 <laughs> and um, you know how I said I never farmed the XP stage out of like after the first week I had to go and farm the XP stage it was so I wasted so much sanity doing it to get him to 60 but it actually wasn't needed because after that guy died, I could have removed um, Scavenger and put down Matterhorn in this this slot, and basically just slowly kill the last guy. I would have trapped him between these four units, and just you know killed him very very slowly. And that's pretty much it for Annihilation Three. Um, that was it was quite rough. It was actually very there was a lot of details and a lot of like. You know, with like perfumer raising your hand, you have to like click it at that exact second. And a lot of trial and error. And every single time that you try it, you had to wait till 350. You had to basically wait through like the first like 15 minutes of the run before you can make an attempt. Which is why I don't think it's worth worth it for anyone to um to do this okay just it's not worth it it really is not worth it just go borrow someone's ifrit this is this is so so not worth the effort um but yeah at least at least i am able to do it and i think by next week um when i need to do it again i will be able to have i'll probably be able to have um i'll have chiaryuki at mastery three and i'll have um I'll probably have Meteor Right and Jitano and Mastery 3 as well at that point. So next week should be a lot easier and I probably should be able to have a stable auto team by next week. But this was this was actually pretty rough. This was actually super super rough. And I think for like free to play players that like started later, um, I, I think doing this without borrowing someone's uh, uh, Unless you pull like Ifrit or like Silver Ash and you have like Silver Ash E2 or like Ifrit um, E1 max level, then maybe maybe you can do it without borrowing a support unit, but you should probably just borrow someone else's Ifrit if you don't have an Ifrit. It would make this like 10 times easier and not require you to E2 a whole bunch of units because basically you could just put Ifrit up here um, and then just face her down and just deal with everything the whole entire fight and not remove any of your units um, doing that so there's no timing no no crazy stuff involved if you do that um, which is definitely what I recommend instead of 
trying to do it like this, which which is super, super rough. Anyways, that's pretty much it. Um, if you, yeah, just, if you have any questions, be sure to leave it in the comments um, below. I'll try to help you out. And I think in the, the next video, I will borrow someone's Ifrit and just show, like that will be an actual guide on how to do it. I think this is just a, I wanted to basically um, explain my thought process of how I did this. And I don't think it's very efficient to do it this way. I would highly recommend against it, but I still did it anyways for, you know, for the science. But that's pretty much it. Um, be sure to be sure to sub to catch the Ifrit video and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.